But I have a genuine question. Have any of you grown Moira bananas? Have any of you tried growing it? Have you tried, doctor, growing Moira bananas? Yes. And did you succeed in getting fruit? And do you still grow them? Any reason you stopped? Getting older now. Is it because it's a lot of labor intensive? Yes. Exactly. Ibrahimpur. I'll be talking in, about that. There is a difference in the Moira banana. How? How? The, the reach. No, you can make out. It's a variety. We'll talk about it. It's a variety. It's a variety. Yes. If you go on the if you go on the net and you search corn bananas or potato you will find all the different types of bananas, and one of them is the Moira banana. Now from here they have gone to Todamar and all that, and they are bringing them and selling them in Goa. And we think we call them Moira banana because they say, "I'm in Moira Ghatla." In fact, I'm going to start with the talk and we'll uh, get into it in detail because it's not just Moira bananas, it's our culture that we're losing out on. All right, and we'll have a look at uh, the GI tag. Do you all know what's a GI tag? What's it for, a GI tag? When I say something is GI tagged, what exactly do we mean? Indigenous. It's indigenous to that place? They have the rights to it? All right, so for example, if we think of Kutch embroidery, it's indigenous to Kutch, and uh, when you look at it, you know exactly it comes from that region. Or Jaipur, uh, Jaipur uh, pottery, and as Nesta says, Feni. All right, so Feni is uh, GI tagged. Let's and uh, we'll have a look. Now, Nesta, you can't answer because this is your line. But what are the other GI tags we have in Goa? Any idea? I'm going to read out a few. Oh, lovely. So, I'm going to read out and tell me if whether we have the GI tag for this. Goa Bibinka, do we have the GI tag? Yes. Not yet. All right, so it's in the process. All right, Goa Mankurad, Nesta knows about it. Within two months, this pride of ours, our Goa and Mango, is going to get a GI tag, which is amazing, and we'll see why uh, a GI tag is essential. What about Goa and Cashew Nuts? Not yet, but in the process. Coconut vinegar, does it have the GI tag? No. It is rejected in fact, so not every product gets a GI tag. Goa vinegar, the coconut vinegar was rejected. Reason being, you can't prove that it comes from that particular place. Same for um, carvings, uh, coconut carvings of Goa. You know, we've seen these really beautiful carvings. It's not uh, just of Goa. Azulej. Those beautiful paintings on tiles, no, rejected. Crochet, something that you've been promoting so much, rejected. Hasn't got the GI tag. But let's look at Moira Bananas. Anyone knows another name for Moira Bananas? The Konkani name? Not Nendran, not Nendran. Okay, Mandoli, because that's another name for Moira also. Which other uh, products have the GI tag? You've said Feni, you know another chili. All right, there is the cola chili. There's another chili too. Harmal chili has got it. We have five. We have five GI tags: Moira bananas, Harmal chili, uh, cola chili, feni, and something that we all love at the fest. At the fest, we buy this. It's the first thing. Khaje, khaje, cardio bodio is something that's got a GI tag, and I'm so happy because again, that's so typically Goan. Uh, I teach French, right? And when you're a language teacher, you start comparing different cultures. And that's when you realize that we in India have so much that we take for granted. And we've not been preserving, protecting. So I believe these are a start. But you all belong to the same plant group I belong to. And I'm sure you all have uh, watermelons, tain leaves. What are the other uh, plants that we have that, that are typically our region? Like, Saligao. When I say Saligao, do you all have any crop that is yours? 
sugar cane all right lost we've lost out on it uh, all right bende from santista all right watermelon para also is known for the watermelon aldona where is that from is goan variety all right and mankura is on the on already so you, you have to apply for these and uh, i'll read out to you what's a gi tag and we'll discuss this again as i said this is not just moira uh, bananas but us protecting our culture all right it's not just our buildings but it can also be our plants it can be our land and we'll have a deep discussion of where we play a role so a gi tag as uh, you rightly said is um, a geographical indication all right that's the form refers to a sign name symbol used on products having a specific geographical origin and possessing uh, qualities or reputation that are due to that origin itself why do you think moira bananas are famous why do they get a gi tag what about what about it how were they so uh, nestor has one theory of how they were fertilized before but uh, it depends on multiple factors land being one of them um, the soil the techniques used all that uh, become part of the gi being a french student i i looked at wine all right and there they have a term they use called terroir terroir is uh, local winds humidity climate temperature rainfall birds fauna pollination insects composition microorganisms soil fertility ph levels slope elevation terrain proximity to the coast uh, unspoiled countryside region distance from pollution organic practices horticulture skills and perm uh, permaculture all this is part of terroir and if you see uh champagne we can't call uh, any uh, sparkling wine champagne champagne comes from a region called champagne that is the gi for that particular variety of grapes so when i say moira banana it comes from that region and it's a sense of pride so the french have what they call appellation and each of these regions are known for their cheese for their wine and they promote it finally a gi tag allows you to promote it anyone knows which was our first product to get a gi tag in india no in india in india not basmati no, not a uh, feni is of goa but it's it's something that we drink in the morning tea tea all right and the darjeeling tea so for example yeah you can see so the producers of darjeeling tea can exclude the use of the term darjeeling from other tea products that are not grown in their jurisdiction and not produced as per standards defined in the laws of the geographical indication all right what are the benefits of a gi tag let's let's brainstorm what are the benefits of a gi tag and i'm watching nestor to see <laughs> if he's looking at my what is a gi tag it's a geographical indication which means uh, uh, i've applied for say the moira bananas and only if they're grown in this jurisdiction can they be called moira bananas and as yes it would like how we have for products i say mark yes 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 tell me all right correct okay hmm it does it does so this is the other side but what is the benefit what do you think why would we want to say hey these tenleys are from i can think of moira again moira okay preserve
Economic <laughs> advantage, very true. That's the point number one. Economic advantage. In fact, uh, Moira bananas are not the only bananas that are GI tagged. We have multiple uh, bananas. One is from Jalgaon, all right, and from uh, from Tamil Nadu. I can't remember the name, but they uh, export these to Dubai, and I have facts and figures of how much business they do. These are bananas that are tasty. They're exported, and economic growth. Another. Uh, thing that you all said was prevents unauthorized use of gi tags it allows you to expand business you have something that is indigenous to the soil what more can you make out of it when i say moira bananas what are made out of them chips oh, love, to love to eat them chips okay you say moira banana immediately we think of those uh, what our grandmothers used to make fry it in ghee with a little yeah, fritters halwa halwa but I'll, I, now I'm going to tell you about me. I, I'm born and brought up in Bombay. Uh, I came uh, to clean up the house in 2020, and that's when I saw what a mess the garden was in, and my grandpa always kept it well. And I said, hey, I'm going to move to Goa. And I said, if I move to Goa, I'll teach French. I'll also grow Moira bananas and bring them back to Moira. Not knowing that the land that I have gets waterlogged when it rains so much. Last year, it rained and poured, and it was waterlogged at two move them and you see images of how they were neatly lined and now they're in another place. Where did I get my Moira bananas from? I moved to Goa in Jan and from day one I knew I wanted a dog and I got it on day two and I knew I wanted Moira bananas which I got six months later because uh, they don't they don't give you suckers so easily. It takes time. I thought people were giving excuses and I, I, I can imagine what you said, but I didn't hear you. All right. So I searched and searched, and a lot of people said, don't go to Mapsa, because they dip these in hot water, and they don't grow. And so I went to Mapsa. And how did I go to Mapsa? On my birthday, all right, 6 in the morning, I said, I'm going to try. And there I got seven Moira bananas waiting for me, brought them all, planted them, and every day I would monitor them. Now, when you plant any new plant, they don't grow immediately. And I'm like, ha, she cheated me. She put it in hot water. <laughs> but almost one year later, they're growing. All right, they're growing taller. Uh, they need support. So when uh, Frederick Narona told me, do this talk, I said, I'm a French teacher. For me, plants is, I plant them and I pour water. That is my idea of gardening, all right? But that's not how it is with Moira bananas. Dr. Oswald told me, you have to fertilize them. Don't be a cheap moide cart. Put fertilizer, <laughs> feed it. Nestor has a theory of how you use fertilizer for Moira bananas. But the idea is, during this season, go to Mapsa Market. They sit. I went at 6 in the morning, and it was my best birthday present ever. Moira bananas that I was waiting for. Now, they will grow. They've not yet got suckers. And I got images to show that they've not got suckers. And I realized that's because they need to be uh, fertilized and cared for. Uh, one more thing about GI tag benefits, it expands business. When I, so when I thought about Moira bananas, what to do? I researched on how you can use the skin to make banana flour. Now remember the world is going towards being vegan, they're looking at natural ways of uh, you know, using gluten-free products. Uh, I actually bake with uh, banana flour, it can be used for baking. All right, and that's something that we've not looked into. Uh, how do you make the banana flour? It's so simple. You get uh, banana flour on Amazon. Check the price. Do you know how to make it? Just dry banana peel and crush it. And that's your banana flour. Uh, uh, it is green banana peel that has more, uh, so you can use yellow or green. Green has more uh, health benefits, uh, things like that. I was talking to... Uh, Teresa Andrad? Nirmala Andrad. Nirmala Andrad, who uh, was telling me how she uses the mango peel to make different things, and it has health benefits. Now, using what she does with mango peels, why not think about something that we use with banana peels? But the idea is to, to grow our Moira bananas, not just in Moira, but other places also, and make products out of it. I make wine. I don't drink, but I love making wine. Banana wine is one of the finest wines I've ever tasted. It has natural sugar. And it tastes so good. I asked the people outside, have you all made banana wine? No. So we can have so many off products. When I went to Humpy, I actually picked up a sari made out of uh, banana fiber. It's beautiful. It looks like silk, but it's not. It's banana fiber. So using the same banana plant, once it gives you the fruit, you can use it for other products. And 
how did I think about doing this? I said, each one has small property of land. We don't have acres of land. But what if our villagers all grow bananas and together, together they get a share. Everyone is part of this cooperative. And then we bring Moira bananas back. We have a proper tag. I thought about having a cafe. You come to this little setup and you have banana bread and muffins and our pancakes and our fritters and and taste Goa in a little cafe. So the, these are the ideas I had and I went into details of it. And when will I teach French? Exactly, which is why my banana plants were falling until he told me, hey, do a talk. And I said, how will I give a talk? I, I've never had a garden. I, you know, I have my balcony. I grow curry pata, I get so happy. I grow mint, I get so happy. Now I have a, uh, I have place to grow things, but I'm still learning. Thanks to the Saligao Seed Group, I've learned so much. And I know that Nestor's there, Dr. Oswald is there. So for the technical questions, they will answer. But for our role in getting the GI tags for not just our plants, but what are the other things we can think of? I'm always an outsider looking at my own Goan culture. I look at our feasts. You can make a face pack. There is a company called Lush. They have fresh products and they go at such a high price. Patent it, patent it, put your own GI tag on it. <laughs> yes. It, it enhances tourism, that's my last point. So uh, when you have a GI tag, like for example, let's look at Jaipur Pottery. People go to check the Jaipur Pottery because they know it is specific of that place. Or in uh, Goa, there is this very beautiful uh, tables that they use, uh, that they give for weddings. It has parrots on it. Have you all seen it? It's green, bright colors. It's called something in Bisholi, yes. So again, we have things that we ourselves don't know about and we need to uh, highlight. So, yes. Tequila is a classic example of a GI tag. Yes. Yes. Does it become a GI tag? No. It is. The GI has come. The, no, he's saying if I plant uh, Moira bananas in Saligao, it's specific to a jurisdiction. Yes. Yes. No. That's what you said. Yeah. And you know what? Before someone else could do it, Perne was very smart. Perne Ibrampur has filed for the GI tag. It is not Moira. Okay, so this tag has been filed by uh, Perne Ibrampur and they have the ones. Okay, now who have, uh, how do you apply for this? So there's actually an association called uh, Mandoli Bananas for, or Moira Bananas. Uh, it's their association and they applied for it under Class 31 Specified GI Act, uh, the Mandoli Banana Growers Association, Ibrampur Perne. They applied for it and they've got it. So it's, yeah, they're called, uh, it comes, it, uh, it's another word for Moira. It is, it is. I'll show you the different words for Moira. The different words for Moira is Maidya, Mordia, Mainoli, please excuse my accent, uh, Mandoli, Mindoli, Moidya, Chikeli. These are all the names and it started here. Now we, we, saw the, uh, we saw the word teruar and how teruar gives it the taste. But here we have Ibrampur Perne farmers who are smart enough to see a business opportunity here and they've cracked it. They know how to plant 
uh, this Moira bananas. As someone was telling me, I think it was, I don't remember, I spoke to so many people, but someone said there's a technique of planting this. It was you. Correct. So there's a technique of planting these. We heard just now uh, through Dr. Oswald, you can't grow it in the same place after some time. Uh, we have no information currently. When I did my research, Kerala has so much of information. It's just out there. They, they ha make so many products out of it. They've been uh, sending their bananas to us when we can do the same. What's the traditional knowledge about this? Uh, very interesting. I read an article that it grows tall and when you, when you take the fruit out, it cries. The tree literally cries. That is a traditional myth or story that I heard about. It's a myth. It's a belief. Another thing that... Who would, which is lost. My great-grandmother used to plant Moira banana. So when I told my mom, hey, I'm preparing for this talk, she said, you know, your great-grandmother used to plant Moira bananas. And suddenly I felt this connect. So even when I'm on my Moira waterways, there's a connect I feel till I realized that our ancestors used to go down that riverbed and they used to go to Panjim all the way. So even with Moira Bananas, there was a strong connect. With my, with my house, there's a strong connect. Some things go beyond. And I think I've received a lot of love from our grandparents and that, that love, that, that pride of Goa, being Goan. I think that remains in us, especially when you've been born and brought up outside. All right, so you come back with these ideas, but then you realize you don't have the technical know-how. Here you are at a uh, Saligao Institute talking about a subject you have no idea about, but you, you're passionate about it and you're hoping you get people to, uh, you know, take care of their plants that they come from and, and protect our culture that I think is, that we're losing out on. I'm going to read a bit more about how they were introduced. Now, people who know about, Moira, about this uh, group, it is called Musa ABB, all right? This is the variety, and uh, they say that it originated in Malaysia, in Borneo Islands, and there was trade between uh, Malaysia and Madagascar, and so we found uh, bananas getting, these certain variety of bananas getting into Africa. Now, remember, in the Vedic literature and scriptures, you have mention of banana trees. So we've already had banana trees over here. It's one of the first plants to be cultivated and to be domesticated, all right? One of the first plants. And uh, it was the Franciscans who brought more, uh, these variety of bananas to our villages. Do you agree with this? Do you all know about the history? All right. Because again, this is debatable. I've not researched so much into it, but it was the Franciscans. The Portuguese take our bananas to Brazil. All right, so this particular plantain, it's also called the French plantain. Where did the Franciscans get it from? Again, there's a French influence over there, which I'm going to look into. Uh, and so now, this, this is an article that says, cultivation in Moira village has declined. They are cultivated in other parts, such as Bicholi and Perne, no longer in Moira. Having said that, do you know that beautiful path where there are fields on both sides, you're going towards Nachinola? I was sitting there and I see this farm and I go talk to them in my konkani and I said, I have Moira bananas, they're not growing. You know how long they take? And I had researched this. One and a half year, it takes a lot of time. This person said it takes two years and you have to be patient. But, keep... but actually, I've grown them at my farm using a lot of organic honey. They grew very tall. And? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I got a wild go problem. Okay. One and a half years. Yeah. Nendran.
which make them which make them more f- to be eaten as a cooked vegetable the nendrans you're talking about yeah 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 see musa acuminata and musa balbisiana simple 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 english <laughs> uh, see when you say homo sapiens is the human now you cannot make it simpler than that so you have musa acuminata and musa balbisiana okay now the acuminata species cultivars are aa diploids and aaa triploids they have three now the balbisiana are bb now you will get in this ab ab abb or aab it depends which gene has come from which parent combination and that will give rise to your different types of bananas no a nendran is see all humans look same but frederick is not the same as dr oswald <laughs> a simple answer i'm giving you all because you all want simple answers to complex questions <laughs> Huh? Yeah. 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 Nendran is different. Taste. The Nendrans. The Nendrans are for cooking, right? For cooking. The Moira are eating. So these have more of A A B. A B B. And Nendran has. Anyway, don't worry, don't worry, don't take, don't take too much tension. It's wonderful meeting you. You got a nose ring also? Yeah, I got a nose ring. Nice. <laughs> That's a clear one. Moira and no. Moira one, I got rich. Those don't. They'll be smoother. Yes. What's inside? All right, so we are almost done, and you will see over here. There's Nendran. There are different varieties. There is something called, and these are all uh, Kerala varieties that are well researched. Go online. There are so many professors who have researched into it. Such a pleasure. So again, as I told you, the GI tag has been applied by Perne. They saw an opportunity. They got it done. I, and I found that interesting. It's not even registered by Moira. It doesn't grow here anymore. This is how it looked when I brought it. Uh, you know i planted i brought it i sent frederick narona a photo so you were the first person i sent the photo to and that's how when preparing for this i actually had the photo available and it didn't grow so now these plants that were so short are taller than me all right so uh, they're certainly growing but it takes time what else do i want to say so i looked at icr we have some information and i'll just give you an uh, understanding of this Uh, uh, mandoli or mindoli is a huge and tall growing banana cultivator found in goa fruits are available at a higher price remember uh, growing this is good it takes it it's a higher price but it uh, why doesn't it work because it takes so long and therefore i looked at intercropping so i had looked at intercropping where you grow other uh, plants at the same time harvest them and they add to the soil so intercropping is something that's re- uh, recommended uh They usually you get only one sucker hardly they've written hardly one sucker per plant initially as the plants grow very tall they are prone to lodging and need bamboo stocking so again that's an added cost people don't want to put bamboos i mean minimum 2 3 bamboos for one plant uh, so there is stocking then there's robbery that happens so when i spoke to people they said a lot of robberies happen so you plant it it's growing neighbors are watching other people are watching boom it's gone so you have made a loss Ah, oh. uh, monkeys. All right, that's another thing. In Moira, luckily no monkeys. Then you have bunches of 15 to 17 kg that can be harvested after 450 days. So we are looking at more than a year and a few months uh, of planting. Each bunch has six to seven hands with 12 to 14 fruits or fingers per hands. I found out that it's actually called berries. All right, so a banana plant has berries. Uh, each hand weighs. Uh, 2 to 2.5 uh, to 2.75 kg so you're looking at something very heavy fruits are long big dark yellow in color 
weighing around 200 grams 21 to 23 centimeters long 5 to uh, you know 5.25 diameter pulp is light orange very firm sweet with a flavor similar similar to the nenzran cultivator of kerala all right it's similar but not completely the same i found something very interesting while working on this presentation i went to my uh, went to my garden to check my banana trees closely and before i got my moira bananas i decided to bring kerala bananas how did i get it i went on to amazon and they sent me a rubbish plant it was it, it wasn't even a banana plant i had to write to them i said do you think i'm stupid what is this so they had to resend it back to me they gave me a stump it was just a stump and i'm thinking what will grow from this today that plant is taller than me it has suckers but the fruit that came i was in bombay that time didn't last it was very weak and it died off and it didn't last but that has got suckers when i went to prepare for this presentation the nenzran has red color stem all right it's red while our moira banana is green you can see the difference between the two and i was quite amazed to see that i have an image which you all can see later on i also have recipes for you all a very traditional hindu recipe by milant kamath who got it from someone else and it's a traditional recipe of making our uh, mandoli bananas into a you know use coconut jaggery and it has a different taste yeah, no, I the are you i'll have to look at it and then there is one by alves alves is someone who i really like and he uses uh bananas to make neuros all right so he makes a paste out of it puts coconut and kismis into it and he makes neuries out of it all right so we i'll share these recipes with you and i want to end my presentation now we'll talk about different things and aspects that you think should be included what we should do uh, i think one thing is about awareness about what we have in goa yesterday i picked up a book on birds of goa we see these birds daily but how many of us can name them we can't what if there are more articles that promote promote such things i happened to go for a tea art that's when i went to braganza menezes institute what beautiful azuleys on the walls and outstanding and i found out that they told a story written by luis camoj uh, his yes it was a story which i didn't even know now i need to research in that so there are so many jewels and i think that's where all of us come into play now uh, for example my neighbor moirika over here well roy who's been giving me story books all right i get my story books from him short stories and i'm discovering goa through these books uh, i end by saying moirechi mati the soil in moira imparts the characteristic taste to the moirechi keli which is missing in bananas from other villages they appear the same yellow and long but lack the latent taste he saying <laughs> now yeah also the people and their skills right? yes the teruar yes 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 one more thing that i wanted to add which is thanks to you i realized we are taking a lot of things for granted we are not looking after our environment and uh, as we say moira bananas have that taste because of the soil but what if the quality of soil my neighbor was telling me the tendlies are not as good as they used to be earlier there is uh, our role in looking after the environment also and it has to be all of us because goa is disappearing in front of us and we have to bring it all back together people think it's the beaches it's tourism like that no it's also these things nestor's farm for example is what i plan to bring my french director to so he can see another side of uh, goa i have my director coming over and i'm thinking what do i show him i i love my goa but what are the aspects father concerts different restaurants like cafe bosley that you all were discussing about so there's a lot of networking that you do and i think that's the way forward to network to have these exchanges where different ideas come in place and together uh, we follow up like how you said you give the seeds to someone and then you monitor have they grown have they not same way today seeds are planted and we need to monitor what is our role in ensuring that these plants grow in our goa that they flourish into a forest thank you very much okay.